Hello, and welcome to the Scriptures Are Real podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about elements of the scriptures that have become real to us in some way because we believe that helps us draw more power out of them, and we need that help these days. As President Nelson has said, that it's it's a time uh, of great uh, uh, trials, but also a time where we'll see the power of God. I'm your host, Kerry Mielstein, and I'm so happy to have with me as, as a guest today my dear friend and fellow ward member, um, Roger Hoffman. So let me tell you a little bit uh, about Roger. I'll let him tell you more because he knows more about him than I do. Um, but Roger, I, I'll first of all say just an incredible, wonderful man. Uh, you may remember his wife, Melanie, was actually our guest last year as uh, we for the Easter episode where we talked about the song um, uh, Gethsemane. And so Roger and Melanie both composed. Roger is a composer, a musician. He plays the, the piano wonderfully. He uh, just does so many things. He's uh, composed many songs and I think now has his own recording studio where he helps other people produce music as well. Um, and uh, you will know him best. And the reason we're having him on um, now, we're doing the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7. And in there in chapter 6, verse 28 is the verse, Consider the Lilies of the Fields. And Roger is the one who composed that song. And uh, I, I mean, it's a song I think most members of the church know. It's been sung beautifully by the the what was then called, I guess, the Tabernacle Choir. Uh, and uh, it's been sung by them a few times, I think. Um, it's a moving, wonderful song. And so we're just here to hear a little uh, bit more from Roger. So welcome, Roger. Thank you so much, Kerry. Yeah, please <laughs> tell us more about yourself. I'm sorry. Okay. I was going to yeah. try to say, it's nice to see you not sitting on a stand as our bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this is a little less formal and then that's nice. So, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, so much to tell. Um, I was born in Vermont, December 12th. And I think Joseph Smith birthday was the fifth. The fifth, I think. Yeah. So, and he was born. But I think you were a couple years later than him. I think a few. Just a couple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was the son of a Protestant minister, and uh, he did. Th he went around uh, three different ta little towns in Vermont preaching on Sunday, and uh, so you know he did that for a lot of years. Very faithful, beautiful man. And uh, my mother actually con was contacted by the missionaries. She avoided them the first time they came through because she didn't know who they were or trust who they were, but they got her the second time. And she, she said that immediately when they, she opened the door to them, she felt something uh, uh. from them. And so we began to have, you know, missionary discussions. And I would sit on the lap of an elder who would draw pictures of how uh, Nephi would come from the old world across the ocean in a boat to the yeah. new world. That's how, where we were. But anyway... Melanie's sitting here going, Roger, stop. <laughs> no, no, we like to hear this stuff. So, uh, yeah, dad, we, mom joined the church immediately with my two older siblings, and I was too young. And then uh, a year or so later, dad got a job teaching political science in Michigan. He was already doing that in Vermont, but this job afforded him the opportunity to do it without preaching on the weekends as well for you know, to yeah. supplement the living. So um, he joined the church a year later. And yeah, that's that's a complicated thing. If you're a minister joining the church, there, there are a number of complications that are part yes, of that. Yes, there are. Uh, but it, it worked out beautifully. He taught gospel doctrine before he was a member. Uh, I don't know if they that's do that great. anymore. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so uh, we had quite a life and with, with a blessed life. And uh so I went on a mission to South Africa and served there from 71 to 73, for those of you who want to know how old I am. <laughs> and, uh, so that's a few years uh, before the revelation on the priesthood. So that, that makes a difference in South Africa. It did. It did. We we had to speak exclusively to white congregations, white people. But uh, glad it's, it's uh, improved now. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, thank, so, thank, literally thank God for that change. But anyway, yeah, keep, keep going. Yeah, so true. Well, it was on the, my mission that I actually found the Lord. And mm. uh, I I was a very timid, shy, oh, af so afraid to talk to people missionary when I first went out. And uh, I just pled with him, you know, for help. And, and uh, it came. And, you know, I it would, again, be too long to talk about that, plus whatever else we may need to talk about. But uh, 
it was a beautiful thing. And the Lord helped me to uh, to know he was there and that he understood where I am and what I need. And uh, so, yeah, it was a, just a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's great. And that I, I, these kinds of stories are also very meaningful. I mean, uh, there are own scriptures, as it were, right? Our own stories that are our own scriptures uh, that are our children and our friends should uh, read and uh, or hear and and understand our faith journey as well. And so, uh, and I've heard you talk about various parts of that uh, here and there before, and just the uh, the help in overcoming that shyness and some some uh, you know, confidence in, in teaching people that kind of a thing. And and uh, all I can say is thank the Lord for miracles. Uh, you okay. continue to. To preach, uh, I've heard you talk in our ward and as a high council speaker and all sorts of things, and uh, uh, you continue to be a powerful speaker. Well, I'm grateful teacher. when you say that. You know, we all go home and say, did I say the right thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, I go yeah. home. I, I I know that I said something wrong somewhere. I, that's just a given. At some point, I'm going to do that. Well, I, I know that happens, but it's true. You just but trust I, the spirit to make up the difference. Yes, yes, and, and that happens. I know it happens. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I just I came to BYU, met and married Melanie, and uh, that was really that was when my life took off. I'm sorry, I'm looking yeah. over at her. Uh, that that was a good day. That was the finest day in the world. Yeah. And, and uh, for our audience who maybe didn't hear that, I would say go back to, to Easter of 22, uh, that podcast episode. I don't know what number it was or anything, but you can find it with Melanie Hoffman and, and you can get to know Melanie. If you uh, haven't heard that one, you'll enjoy that one a lot as well. And then you'll know both Roger and Melanie and you'll see how blessed we are to be their neighbors. You're kind. So, well, OK, to co sort of preface what happened with Consider the Lilies, Melanie and I decided in about 1980. Two. I'm looking for her calendar to so see. While I was in uh, in middle school, <laughs> yes, we decided that we wanted to serve the Lord, and uh, we we chose to be chosen because you can do that. You know, yeah. if you have desires to serve God, you're called to the work. Yep. So um, the thing that helped us was in our scripture studies, we came across. Consider the lilies, of course, how they, you know, how they grow. They toil not, they neither, they don't spin. Um, but it, it, the Lord takes care of them. And there's another promise. JST does it, I think, better. Seek ye first to build up the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, and he was talking about temporal things, shall be added unto you. So we thought, we're going to do this. And so I quit my job at BYU, and we just went on out into a, a independent music sort of a career with a basic slant towards always trying to serve the kingdom and you know the people in it. So um, along the way, many things happened to us to allow us to continue the work financially. Work uh, that was going to be of one size blossomed while I was sitting there talking to the gentleman who was, you know, hiring me. Uh, we had a friend of ours come up to us one day just after our car had died, and we hadn't mm. seen him for years, and he came up and knocked on the door with and with a kind of a puzzled look on his face, and he said, could you use a car? Uh, <laughs> it's a great <laughs> old. And we said yes, it's gratefully, and we drove it for a couple of years, you know, and uh, it was just such a blessing, and we moved into a ward where people – we were young and they were kind of more mature and uh, we would, we kind of got adopted. I, we'd go to church and I'd come home and there'd be a $50 bill stuck in my pocket that I didn't know how it got there. <laughs> we'd wake up with groceries on our porch sometimes, you know, and there was just all kinds of help. Uh, and so Melanie and I decided we wanted to talk to our artist friends, the LDS artist friends and say, listen, to whatever degree you can, uh, Commit yourself to the Lord. He will take care of you. And uh, so we talked about various ways to give the message, you know, and, and uh, the music. And uh, I went to the church because we couldn't afford a piano, but the bishop let us have a key. So I was sitting there in the in the chapel at their, their lovely grand piano playing along. And sometimes I find that music comes, it kind of bypasses the intellect. And it goes right from the heart to the fingers. 
interestingly enough. That, and, that's never happened to me, just so you know. But I, I'll trust you. <laughs> okay. And, and I, my, I did take two years of piano, and now I remember how to play the theme song to mash with one hand. That's about all I can do. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, so funny. Well, I was sitting in the chapel one day, and I was just kind of playing, letting my fingers go. And they started to do this thing that I thought, oh, that, that's good. Da 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 I didn't want to do that, so I kept playing and not noticing it and not noticing it until I memorized it. Uh, and then immediately words came rolling into my head. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. And I thought, oh, my, this is exactly what we wanted to tell our artist friends. He, he clothes the lilies of the field. He feeds the birds in the sky. And he will feed those who trust him and guide them with his eye. I get choked up every time I think about it. So... The second verse was essentially the same. It was about the sheep, you know. Um, the, so, 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 yeah. Did you just read the uh, the the all the the uh, lines of the first verse? I guess you just did. Yeah, how they fly, how they fly, and oh no, I didn't. Trust, I'm sorry. Trust him. Well, that's okay. Maybe I'll just read it uh, for people uh, so they can kind of picture. So they may be hearing it in their head already. But consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they grow. Consider the birds in the sky, how they fly, how they fly. He clothes the lilies of the field. He feeds the birds in the sky, and he will feed those who trust him and guide them with his eye. Right. So yeah. that's that's yeah. what you were just talking about. That first verse, which is very powerful. So anyway, sorry, keep going. No. So and the second verse: Consider the sheep of his fold, how they follow where he leads. Though the path may wind across the mountains, he knows the meadows where they feed. And I thought of Lehi and his family going through the more fertile parts of the wilderness, being led through them, you know? And I thought, yeah, yeah this this works. The mountains are tough, but uh, we get to feed, you know? He takes us where we need to go. He clothes the lilies of the field. He feeds the, the birds of the sky, and he will feed those who trust him and guide them with his eye, all-seeing eye. And uh, I was so happy with that. Uh, being the lazy songwriter that I am, I thought, this is great. All I've got to do now is sing the chorus and then put it up a step and I got a song. And so I was ready to go home and I got started to get up from the piano, but I felt like sort of it was sort of like, come on, sit down. You're not done yet. And I thought, oh, OK. And here comes a line that just it kind of blew me away. Consider the sweet, tender children who must suffer on this earth. And I thought, I can't, I'm just a little podunk songwriter. I can't figure that out in the next couple of lines. Right. And uh, so I started to get up and say, yeah, I really, I'm done. I've got a couple of good verses. And the thought came to me, you know, you're not writing this anyway. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> so, so, so sit there. down and shut up. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so consider the sweet, tender children who must suffer on this earth. The pains of all of them he carried from the day of his birth. He clothes the lilies of the field. He feeds the lambs in his fold. And I love that image for children. And he will heal those who trust him and make their hearts as gold. Oh, when I heard that, I just, I was, I was a gone man, you know? Yeah. I, I was overwhelmed. Because my initial understanding of the gospel is the atonement will forgive you for your sins, you know. But I didn't understand the atonement. The Savior will take upon you all your pains, all your sorrows, all your troubles, and he will heal. How many troubled souls are there in the world, you know? Billions. Yeah. He will heal those who trust him. Oh. And then, and guide them with his eye, because Melanie and I still needed guidance. Right. Whatever. And uh, so anyway, to me, that was uh, 
I don't know, a crystallizing moment in my life. And it's carried its message and the spirit of it has been with us through all this time. We've been 40 years now in the wilderness <laughs> serving <laughs> the Lord. And he always manages to come up with a way to keep us alive and keep us out of debtor's prison. And or, <laughs> you know, So, yeah, we're good and able to work. And I just feel so grateful for that opportunity. Yeah, you've you've been an example of what you were asking people to to do, uh, and and in that song where you were just going to serve the Lord, uh, however He led you, and trust that He would take care of you, and and it's happened. Yeah, it's a, it's a miracle. Maybe right. I can share just a little bit of my my own story with that last verse, and including uh, even as it's happening right now as we're talking. But um, I, I'll say that I, I, of course I knew that song and. Uh, like almost anyone when when we moved into the ward and someone said, Oh yeah, I was meeting you. And then someone said, he's the one that were, you know, considered the ladies of the field. Of course, immediately I heard, you know, do, do, do. And I, I, I'm kind of tone deaf, so I won't try and do it, but I, I hear the, the, um, the song in my mind and I could hear those first two verses. And I will say that I not sure I ever really paid attention to that last verse and and what it was really saying and and how different it was, which is unusual for me because I'm a I'm a lyrics kind of guy. I'm a let's look at the words and what they mean, right? That's that that's my natural bent. And for some reason I hadn't. And then I heard you tell that story one time, and and I looked at those and and I was deeply touched. But then I'll I'll tell you more. I mean I was deeply deeply touched, but. Um, as time has gone on, and I've been, I mean, when I met you, I'd already been teaching religious education. Well, I think I met you in 2012, and I'd been teaching since 94 uh, college age students. Um, but I would say between 2012 and now, I have seen more students carrying heavy burdens than I did in, in between 1994 and, and 2012. That the burdens just seem to get heavier and harder and heavier and harder. And I'll also say that my children were all fairly young in 2012. And when I thought of it, I thought of, you know, those, those hard sorrows that, uh, that younger children have, but, you know, you don't think of them as, as, uh, too hard. I mean, some have incredibly hard, but my children had, you know, like their heart was broken over this and that, but it wasn't really that hard. Um, but since then I've seen my kids go through some pretty hard things. Um, because they're like all the other kids their age, there are a lot of hard things that are going on. And at the same time, so I, I was starting to recognize, as you said, how many people are suffering. And as I saw my own children, I would say starting in 2018, we saw some pretty tough trials coming for a number of years in a row. Um, and, and I thought, wow, there is a lot of, and, and my friends, we're having the same thing with their children. And I was meeting more and more people who had their children were strained or who were going through tough things. And I was seeing more and more pain with children. And, and at this point, I'm talking to like 20 year old children. Right. But but there still are children. And and how many people I started to know as I got a little older, how many people who their greatest sorrow was what was going on with their children. And 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 that. I was amazed at how much sorrow there was. I knew it, but I knew it better. And then I'll say, as I was made bishop, and both started hearing from people uh, that the trials they were going through that they don't really share with anyone else, and sometimes hearing from the Lord the trials they were going through that they weren't sharing with me until I would talk about them, and sometimes feeling a little bit more how the Lord felt about them. And I can remember one Sunday in particular as I was, uh, it was the sacrament and I was praying, um, about the sacrament. I was praying that, that I would be sanctified and that my family would be healed. And suddenly I looked out at the audience and I was overwhelmed with the need. And just the words came to me to pray for our entire congregation to be healed, that there was more pain than I knew about and that we needed healing. And, and two phrases came to my mind. One was th that we needed Christ to arise with healing in his wings, which has become a favorite phrase of mine. And the other was the, the words that you had penned. And uh, I know now better than I have ever known what you said just a moment ago, that there's a lot of pain. And there's a lot of pain for these, these children, whatever age they are. And I can see better now than ever 
how inspired you were as you wrote those words. And, uh, and even today, as I had a daughter who was telling me about some hard things she'd gone through that she never told us about before. And, and, uh, that was, uh, uh, you know, it's, it makes you sad when you hear that from your children. And, uh, and so it was a day where I could use hearing this phrase that he, he, the pains of all of them he carried from the day of his birth, and he will heal those who trust in him and make their hearts as gold. I think those are inspired words and that there are a lot of parents and a lot of children who need to hear those. And I know I'm going to read those with my daughter tonight, um, but uh, there are a lot of of people who need what in, in a way, I mean, it's inspired. And one of the definitions of scripture is if you're inspired to speak this from the Lord. And and so I think it's a kind of scripture that that third verse there, especially. Uh, and I am. I'm grateful for the healing power it's had in my life and even today, the healing power it, it's having. So thank you for that. Well, clearly I was writing over my head. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That's where angels hang out. <laughs> yeah. At any rate, yeah, you know, it's so grateful that it came. I learned so much, you know, and uh, I think we do that when we stand up and we try to speak for the Lord. He fills us with words and ideas, and we can be of enormous help to each other, you know, in yeah. that way. We're using whatever our abilities are to comfort and bless. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I really, really agree. And and I think that's something worth everyone that that we are, I think, healed. So there are more wounds than, than we know, but there's also more healing power than we know, and more power to help heal others than we know. And uh, I mean, as you're saying that, and these words are coming to you, kind of reminded me of I've had this a few times where um, someone was was reading something about a topic and I'd think, wow, that's really good. I, I need to remember that. That's really good. And then they'd say, oh, yeah. And, and you wrote this. I'd say, oh, I don't remember writing that. <laughs> right. And that's one of those clues that that wasn't really me. Yeah, that was that was beyond my ability to write. Uh, that was the Lord. And so it's another thing that I hope will become real for people as they hear, hear your story, not only that God cares and he's going to heal those children, but that God will use us to help others uh, if we we'll just determine we're going to serve him as as you have yeah. and your I, wonderful life. Truly. Yeah. I remember standing in the field in uh, oh, some canyon or other out here, Big Springs, and uh, I told the Lord, I am quite given up to the fact that the way to live is service mm. years ago. And it's still true. Yeah. There's more fulfillment and happiness and enrichment of your life through that means than any other activity I can think of. So I, I could not agree. With, in fact, it heals you as you serve others. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. know, the Lord, he keeps trying to give us of himself. When he teaches us a principle, he said, look, I'm happy. Here's here's how I'm happy. Yeah. This commandment or this principle that I'm giving to you is just a secret way of letting you feel how I feel and yeah. be who I am, you know. And so what a beautiful thing it is that we have gospel teaching and that we can listen to who was it, Neil Maxwell, that said that uh, Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are giving away the secrets of the universe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the yeah. best secrets there are, you know? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm really happy to be involved in this, all this work. So well said. So well said. So I, I hope that our audience, as they're reading, and there are so many good things in the Sermon on the Mount that I'm not even going to try and cover all of them. I'm just going to pick a couple, and we'll talk about those. Uh, and let other uh, forums try and cover everything. But uh, I hope that as they're reading that particular passage, that they'll, that I, I would guess that the song will go through their head. It does mine every single time I read it. Um, and that it will uh, help them recognize, and that hearing this story of yours will help them recognize all the more how much it's true that when we turn our lives over to God, he'll just take care of it. Uh, he'll he'll make it work out if we forget ourselves and go to work. And I think that's what isn't that what President Hinckley's father told him when he was having a hard time right. on his mission? Just forget yourself and go to work. And and that's really the key. If we forget ourselves and go to work, he'll make us uh, more beautiful than the lilies.
I like that. And we'll soar higher than the than the doves, right? So, in fact, he'll bear us up on eagle's wings. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, his kindness is without limit. His love is without limit because he is an eter- eternal, infinite being. And if you're infinite, that means there's no limit to what you can do, to the number of people you can serve, to the number of planets you can make and fill them with people and bless their lives. You never get tired because you're you're infinite. Uh, I love that. You know, what a great being he is. They are. Uh, and, and, and he's our father. Yeah. That's, Again, literally thank God for that. Yeah. And the, uh, because I say all these things about capabilities and powers, but it's love hmm. that motivated him and Jesus and the Holy Ghost to make that eternal covenant to pull this thing off for us, you know? Yeah. And, and really, I think love is the primary characteristic that makes him that kind of a being. Yes, absolutely. And the more we love him and the more we love each other, the, the more uh, joy we'll have, but also the more our capacity increases. I think so. I think we we move, I don't know if you call it a scale, but on a path, but it's not just a path of going, it's a path of becoming yes. like the Lord. And the more we become like him, the closer we come to that pure love of Christ, which he really wants us to always have. And uh, when God is love, you know, yeah, we want to be that way. Amen. Amen. Well, Roger, thank you. Uh, I, I, this is just... Uh, every time I visit with you, I'm edified, but I find myself particularly edified uh, today. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, well, anything edifying discussion, Gary? Yeah, well, that's just good stuff. Anything else you'd like to add, or? Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm that question. Grateful. I'm grateful to Heavenly Father for what He has chosen to do with me and with my wife, and I have great hopes for. Those children who have walked away from us, because I believe they're going to be included in the gathering of Israel that Jeremiah talks about. He'll gather them. I agree. So if people wanted to read these lyrics or some of the other lyrics you have or other songs you have, uh, where do they go? Is it Roger and Melanie Hoffman dot com? Uh, that one works, but HoffmanHouse.com is the, actually the one where we go. Okay. I have, an, I have an article about writing Consider the Lilies on there, and it includes all the lyrics. Okay. So that's H-O-F-F-M-A-N-H-O-U-S-E, all one word, dot com. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. So two Fs in the middle, HoffmanHouse.com, mm-hmm. um, and you'll be able to find all sorts of uh a great musical opportunities on there that uh, I think music is, uh, and all people have to do is go listen to some of the um, episodes we did back when we were doing the Psalms to, to hear more about that. But uh, I think uh, music has a power to edify us and to, to help heal us when we're struggling um, yeah. that, that we should take advantage of. So that's a great resource for our audience as well. So, Well, thank you for spreading the word. Well, th- thank you. Thank you, Roger, and, and thanks to our audience. And we hope you'll uh, both listen to that song and, and think about it and uh, and go forth uh, serving the Lord and, and letting him make you like the, the lilies of the field. So thank you. Thank you, Carrie.